author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and I'm here at the Seattle home of Nicola Griffith, author of Hild. Nicola, welcome to Author. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. I'd like you to think back, if you okay. can. I can. When did you first look up and realize stories mattered to you? Just story in general. Mm, probably when I began to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I used to tell stories to my little sister when I was about four. And she was in the cradle, pretty much. Yeah, to keep her quiet, to keep her amused, I would, I would invent stories. So I've, I've always told stories. And, and then, of course, I come from England, which is very much a pub culture. So you, you get there, you have a pint, and everyone kicks back, and they're like, right, now, right. Oh, I'm going to tell you the story about... And everything becomes... You just went and bought a loaf of bread, but you turn that into a story. You give it some drama. I learned that, I think, from my mother. Yeah. She... I, a, while, a few years ago, I went back to England for a visit, and she was on the phone, and she was telling one of my sisters about the day we'd had together, and I didn't recognize it, because I thought, well, yeah, we went, we, we bought some milk, we stopped in at a butcher, we went to the library, and she's like, we hurtled in here and ran in the door and screeched, I'm like, whoa, it sounded, ex I was exhausted by the time she'd finished, and to me, we had just wandered through a few shops. Now, of course, with Hild, this is a historical person, obviously mm -hmm. a character, and this is the first time you've written about someone who specifically created a story around someone who exists. Who, who was real, yeah, it's yeah. quite shocking. <laughs> and so there's, the, there's, there's Nicola the, who has the imagination and likes to make up stories, and then there's the one who's telling the story about someone who's real. How, do, how does that imagination blend with this? We do that all the time. Everything, every story we tell is it, it, it's, it's magic in a particular way. We, we take the ordinary things, as I was saying earlier, and, and make them, we pump up the volume. Yeah. I mean, Hilary Mantel called her book Wolf Hall, not Sheep Cottage. You know, <laughs> it's, right. it's war and peace, not knitting and, and gossip. It, it's the interesting things. A life, to actually write someone's life would take millions and millions and millions of words, plus images, plus sound files. But to get the right things in a novel, you have to just sort of lay this, um, what do they call those things? Uh, surveyors use them in... Um, Grids. Yeah, a grid, thank you. Yeah. To, to lay a grid over it and choose the most interesting, yeah. shiny path and follow that. And aren't you looking for something valuable to share with someone else. It's not just to tell a story, but there's a value to that story. I want to I don't certainly, mean a theme necessarily, but there's a, something valuable about, about being human within that story. Absolutely, that, that's all my work is, I think, if there is a theme to my work, if. Um, <laughs> it's that people are, well, humans are, are humans no matter what. That, that even 1400 years ago we were we had the same concerns that we do today yeah. that we had the same constraints we had the same joys we we and, and that love is an amazing thing um and that life is worth exploring and and kindness is a virtue and all those things that i actually believe that people are good inherently to me everything dovetails down to love that in the end, it's the sort of organizing principle, certainly of my life, it's mm. been, um, that everything has gathered around, whether I see it all the time or not. Um, yeah, I think the world, I think it's really important to approach the world with good intent and to assume good intent from others. Obviously, if they're coming at you with an axe. <laughs> well, they don't have good you might intent, want to probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you might want to run faster than they do. Or, or have a bigger axe. It doesn't matter how you respond. But if you approach a situation imagining, assuming good intent, I think the outcomes nine times out of ten are going to be better. 
I've always felt that one of your greatest tools is going to be compassion. Your ability to inhabit the lives of people who you might not even like, in, you might not have even liked in real, if you were to meet face to face. But as you write them, you have to be able to inhabit them with some compassion to yes. render them. Yes. Well, the three books I wrote before Hild were about a woman called Out, and I wrote them honestly to find out the answer to a simple question. One question, it took me three books. What kind of person could just kill someone like that? I had Because I had this dream about a woman who wakes up and there's a guy holding a gun to her head and she just kills him. She surges off the bed and kills him. Bang, like that. It, right. The whole thing takes three seconds. And I woke up thinking, whoa. You had that dream. I had that dream. Wow. And, and like all dreams, sometimes I was the person doing the killing and sometimes right. I was hovering somewhere over their shoulder. Yeah. So I started, well, I thought, well, how, how would you get to be a person who could do that? And so it took me three books to find and out. that book was an exploration of that question. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I wanted to find out. I, I always write to find out. I want to know why, what happened, how, what, what makes a person tick, what, why are they like that? So yeah, all writing is an exploration for me. You know, this is, I hear this again and again of every writer I know, it's true for me also. I think sometimes readers have a hard time understanding that even though, so you're the author of Hild, mm -hmm. and you, it lit up for you, her story, mm -hmm. and yet you had to, I'm guessing, you had to write to find out why it meant so much to you. Absolutely, well actually, hmm, I had Even to, though you knew it meant something to you, but why? Really why? I just had to find out about Hild, who she, who she was, how had she done the things she had done in that time, 1400 years ago, in what used to be called the Dark Ages. Here's a woman who is born the second daughter of a woman, a widow, in exile. So no real material resources, no real status, no nothing. And she ends up being one of the most powerful women who influenced, in the north of Britain, who influenced the course of British history, which of course has influenced the course of world history to a degree. Right. And, and this 1400 years ago, how did this woman do it. She went from being illiterate, because everyone when she was born was illiterate, right. to teaching five bishops and founding a center of learning. It's like, that's an amazing thing. How did she do that? I'm writing these books to find out. You know, whenever I hear stories like that, it, it reminds me that our power does not exist in our institutions, in our families even necessarily, though those things can support us, but that wellspring within us that is probably, its depth is even beyond our own personal understanding. If she could go from zero, I mean z zero to that, mm -hmm. from within herself. Yes, we're all constrained. People say to me, well, you know, weren't women just like chattels in those days? I'm like, well, I doubt they thought of themselves that way. Uh, these days, we, we look back a hundred years ago and we see that women couldn't vote. Right. Women could, but did they think of themselves as objects rather than subjects? No, they, they were human beings to themselves. We all have constraints. And yeah. we all, because we're human, we find ways around our constraints. And that's what Hill did in, in spectacular fashion. All right, Nicola, I've got one more question for you. Embrace. You ready? I'd like you to finish the sentence for me. If writing has taught me anything, it's taught me what? Patience. Patience. Patience is our friend. So many writers I know, or people who wish they were writers, or who are setting out on the writing journey, they think you can just make stuff happen, but you have to do the work, you have to wait, you have to get it right. I, writing is is a joy, but it's work, and you, you have to take endless pains. There, there are parts of any book that, where I rewrite a paragraph 20 times. And there are other parts of the book that I just, phew, it just pearls out, it's wonderful. But you gotta have patience because you don't know which paragraph you're on right now. Right, you have to really, you have to, you have to trust that the right thing will come that you are heading in the right direction. You have to be patient with yourself, you have to be patient with the work.